Hey guys, it's Anthony back with another market update. In today's video, we'll talk about where the market went this past week, talk about how I got stopped out of my short at 42.50, and then we're all gonna talk about where we think the market's going in this coming week. If you're looking to become a consistently profitable trader, definitely hit that subscribe button. I personally trade ES, which is S&P 500 futures, and NASDAQ futures. If you're not profitable yet, just stick with it. Uh, it took me two years to become profitable. Make sure you stay all the way to the end because I have something really shocking to show you near the end of the video. You won't want to miss this signal. It's something that no one talks about, so just stay to the end. I got something really special for you at the end of this video. If you do appreciate the video, just, just give it a thumbs up. I really it, it lets me know that you liked this video and you want to see more of it, so if you could just take two seconds, just click the thumbs up button. If you liked it, I really appreciate that. I took lots of courses, lots of mentorships, programs paid for, spent a lot of money learning, a lot of time learning, a lot of hours, and a lot of lessons. But over time, it gets better, and I think that you will become consistently profitable as well if you stick with it. So without further ado, let's dive into the charts. We're taking a look at ES right here on the daily chart. We broke out. Uh, I got stopped out as soon as we got to about 42.50. We had NFP come out Friday morning and uh, you know there was a little liquidity grab. We wicked down and then pushed up and basically just trended up all day. And now you know, I have to reassess my short. However, uh, there's a bunch of things I want to take a look at. Last video, I provided caution on S&P 500 because I said there's a lot of things pointing to reasons why we're topping out and we're likely due for a pretty big correction, like a 5% correction, down to about 4,000 at the time. So we're gonna review all that, take a look at the same things and see if I still think we're gonna have this correction. Like I said before, I've been holding short from 41.50 and uh, my stop was above those highs that we set at about 42.40. And uh, my TP was down here at about 40.20. That's basically where we're at and uh, we got stopped out. Last video came out Thursday. I said we had a signal where I had a divergence with the VIX, and I said that um, usually we have these divergences, we get a sell off. What's interesting is Thursday and Friday, we had a massive VIX crush. So if you just take a look, Thursday and Friday, boom, dumped down and took out all the lows. So last time I showed you this divergence, I said that we were putting in higher lows in the VIX. So if you take a look at the uh, SPX and you overlay the VIX on the weekly chart, you'll see that we had this divergence before where we were making higher highs in SP500 but higher lows on the VIX. And then Thursday and Friday, both just absolutely demolished the VIX to new lows for the past couple years actually, 14 and a half. So this divergence is gone. So that's one thing down showing that we may not get the sell off that we wanted. However, there's, we're gonna run through all the things and see if we still think that we're gonna get this correction coming. However, if you saw my previous videos in the past, every time we make a new weekly low on the VIX, we do sell off about 100 points from the Friday high. So let's take a look at what that would look like. We just go back to the VIX on the weekly chart. You'll see that every time we make a new weekly low, the next week we sell off about 100 points from the previous week's high. Here is an example the most recent example is right here, Monday this week, April 17th. We broke this low that was the January 30th low on the VIX right here. We didn't break it here, we broke it here. Once we broke it here, you'll see that this week we sold off 100 points from the high. I can show you if you just take a look on the chart yourself and back test this, you'll see that. So now we need another new weekly low on the VIX, which just implies that we're going to sell off 100 points from the high on Friday. 100 points from the high on Friday. We had a high of 42.97. So basically, we're gonna come back down and retest 4200 at some point in this coming trading week. And it's happened, it's, that's actually a very often signal. So, you know, we could just come down 4200, bounce, and then continue higher. And that's actually what I am expecting. And you might be thinking, Anthony, how could you be changing that? You, you, you had this 4020 target in mind. Well, things are changing. You had this 4020 target in mind. Well, things are changing and targets move. So basically, I think that this week we will sell off, we'll come back, we'll test 4200 and we'll bounce off 4200. I think we'll actually push up even higher and come to 4350 to 4400 on ES. Yes, I'm saying that correctly. 4350 to 4400. That's personally what I'm anticipating. Uh, oh, we're going to go over reasons why in the video. But first, I think that uh, Monday will be a gap up higher because the debt ceiling is about to be passed by Biden this weekend. Once it's passed, I think we'll have some exuberance Sunday night in futures. We'll have a push up. We'll trade up to 42, uh, 4320 to 4330. And then we'll trade down from about 4330 down to 4200 at some point this week, maybe around June 8th. We'll bounce off of the 4200. And then at some point from about June 8th into the CPI reading, June 13th, we will get up to about 4360 to 4400. And then 
either CPI or FOMC. CPI is June 13th and FOMC is Wednesday, June 14th. One of those days will mark a top and I think that we will then sell off and trend down and we will come below 4,200 at some point by the end of June. So back out to there. Then we'll have to see how far we go from there, but this is essentially what I'm mapping out. This looks like a bunch of random lines, but I'm gonna show you why I think this is gonna happen. At the end of 2021, there was a bunch of drama around the debt ceiling. They extended it multiple times, and then Biden actually signed the deal to raise the debt ceiling December 16th, 2021. That is right here. So we were basically at highs. We sold off uh, about a week before him raising it. We came up near the highs, and then I think Wednesday, December 15th is where we were this past Friday. Biden passed the deal Thursday. So we had a one last pop on Thursday to sweep all the highs and then close down for the day. So basically we pushed up, we pushed up about, about 40 points from the high on Friday. The high we just had on Friday was uh, close to 4,300. So we could push up to 4,330, up to 4,340. Which is, I, which is what I outlined there, but then actually closed the day down a full 0.9%, basically 1% down. And that would basically imply us finishing down on Monday, even though we start up above 4,300, we finished down at about 4,250 or 4,260 on Monday. And then two, the next day, Tuesday, down another 1%, the next day, down another 1%. So that would imply, again, us selling off a total of just over 100 points from the high of Friday. So from 4,300, we pushed up to 4,330, maybe 4,340. But then at some point before the week ends, we get down to about 4,200, maybe a dip a little below 4,200. That's what I'm thinking there. And then we had this short squeeze where we ripped up one more time because, and if you notice, but when they raise the debt ceiling, liquidity actually decreases because a bunch of T-bills are issued. So there's a bunch of liquidity that gets drained from the market to purchase those T-bills and purchase that debt. So that's gonna happen. It's actually about 500 billion in the month of June. And then for the full year, I believe, it's up one trillion. So we're gonna have uh, basically more downward pressure on the stock market for the next one month uh, and few months. So because of that, uh, I think that everyone will think that this is it, this is the crash. And we had one more rip short squeeze, take out all highs in the next week which is why I think we'll push up to that 4350 leading into CPI. Maybe we get a hot reading in CPI, FOMC, maybe they thought they were gonna pause and they decided to raise. So hot CPI and the raise puts a top on the market and then we just continue to have downward pressure from that 4350 to 4400 area at some point by mid-June. Down into the end of June, we sell off to below 4200 and then possibly start really pushing down, trending down and get to 4100 or 4000 at some point in July, but I'm not gonna go that far, but that's basically what I'm looking at. Uh, but this is just what I'm looking at because it's very similar. There's a lot of other signals signifying that we are due for a five to 10% correction on the SP 500 and NASDAQ. So with those signals combined to this debt ceiling drama here, uh, you know, I, this is just something that I'm looking at, something that I, another reason why I think that we will make a high Monday, let's say, beginning of this week, and then sell off Monday, close the day red, continue to sell off throughout the, this week, just about 100 points down from the high, down to 4,200, and then bounce up into 4,350, take out highs one more time. Maybe we get a hot CPI, and maybe we get a, an, a surprise rate hike because they are pricing in no more rate hikes on June, actually. They switch back to a pause. So maybe there's some surprises there, and then from mid-June and on, we start trending down. We did make the high on the day he signed the agreement. Biden is signing the agreement this weekend right now. So I'm recording this on a Saturday, this is going out going on Sunday. Maybe he's already signed it and maybe it's been passed. So Sunday night, we could get some green in the futures, but then Monday we could close red. That's just what I'm looking at. And if we do, then I would still expect to have a 100 point sell off from 4,300 down to 4,200 at some point this week. Previously, we've been watching this HYG divergence where it's basically smart money. And if we push up while smart money does not push up, there's a divergence that forms and it typically signals a reversal and a significant 5%, maybe 10% pullback that comes. However, this divergence can be dragged out for a very long time and it has been dragged out for a very long time. Uh, this one has been basically January 9th to now, but it's been going on ever since August of 2022 because we had actually been going down really this whole time. If you just take a look at HYG, we've just been trending down the whole time. And now uh, we've been exactly sideways. So we hit the same levels as August, 2022, but a massive decline in HYG smart money flow. So 
This is another red red signal. This is another red flag not supporting this rally. But the one I, the divergence I was really looking at was actually just right here from about uh, January 30th. January 30th, the real divergence I was looking at was actually from January 9th. So from January 9th, we've been up massively on ES, but on HYG, we've been down pretty significantly. And take a look, my previous videos I showed that you know, S&P 500 basically went up, now went up 7% in that time period, while HYG went down about 3%. So 3% down HYG, while S&P 500 went up 7%. It's pretty much an unheard divergence. We don't really go this long or this aggressive. You take a look look back in history. I showed other charts. It just we don't have these extreme divergences. Maybe the divergence, maybe the correlation decides not to hold up anymore. Who knows? Or it's just really delayed. So this still signals that we're likely to have a snapback back to about four thousand at some point in the coming weeks or months. But who knows how much longer this divergence is going to go for? Next divergence is on DXY. So the dollar bottomed actually May third. So May third bottomed and we're pushing up making higher lows and higher highs. S&P 500 had a bottom there and pushed up and we've been making higher highs, higher lows. This usually does not happen. If you just take a look at these two lines here, we'll scroll back and we'll take a look at other times that this happened. The dollar bottomed February 1st and pushed up. We had S&P 500 push up just for a day and then we started to actually get the sell off because once the dollar goes up, typically marks the top and then we go down. This one marked the top right away. Right now we have a very delayed reaction. Here's a delayed one in August where we bottomed out on the dollar August 11th and we continue to go higher on SP500 for one more week. Basically you can see from August 11th to the high, one more week before we sold off. So this one got delayed by about a week. Currently you'll see that we've been delayed for one month, not one week. So we've been going up on the dollar for one month. We've been going up on SP500 for one month. So, you know, usually after one week or two weeks, we turn around, but it's been one month, so real dragged on divergence there. Here's a really nice long one that we can have as a comparison. October 28th, bottomed on the dollar and had been pushing up. We got even higher up until November 22nd. So this one was almost a month, month long. This is about three weeks long where we've been going up on the dollar while SCV 500 had also been going up into November 22nd after that about three weeks long divergence from the high to the low. We sold off about five and a half percent. The next divergence we're gonna take a look at is NYA. NYA is the NYSE composite. It's basically the entire stock market. So we're comparing SPX to the entire stock market, just seeing what is the entire stock market doing compared to S&P 500. Typically when we have divergences, it marks a top and we have a, a significant decline or retracement. So you'll see that January 30th, we made a high on NYA. And now we are right here for the week of May 30th. This is the weekly chart. You'll see from that period from SP500 today, we are higher. So you see orange line is NYA and the bars is SP500. We have a significant divergence of about 18 weeks, I believe. Yeah, 18 weeks long divergence. And let's take a look at other times we had this. We had three occurrences in the most recent two years. This is the longest one right now at about 18 weeks. We had one here from the end of May to August, where SP500 went higher. We put in a higher high about 12, week, 12 weeks later, but NYA made a lower high. And then we had the all-time high, where it was about eight weeks long. We went and made a higher high on SP500, but we made a lower high on NYA. So again, right now, currently the longest one, the most extreme divergence. You'll see even uh, in 2021, as we were rallying, we didn't have any of these divergences. We just continued to go up. So there was no divergences with NYA and SPX. There was one here before the COVID crash where we made a lower high on NYA. We made a higher high on SP500 and then we had the COVID crash. There was no other divergences here, no other divergences here, uh, but there was one actually in 2018. So 2018, this is a 35 week difference where we made a high, we made a higher high 35 weeks later and NYA made a much lower high. What happened there? Right after that, we sold off 20% in a matter of three months. So three months, 20% sell off in SP500 after this divergence, and this is a 35 week divergence. So again, these can go on for an extremely long time. We are 18 weeks deep, and we made ex pretty extreme highs though. So since this is already so extreme, it's unlikely to last for much longer based on the things I'm back testing. But like I said, and I'll keep saying, divergence can go on for a lot longer than you could remain solvent if you're shorting it. So you have to have risk management if you're trying to short this. 
Ideally, what we want to see is we want to see a top, a pullback, and then short, and then have stops above that high. These are all things that I'm looking at, reasons why we are likely near a top and why I had been hesitant in the past to go long. Next up, we're going to take a look at RSP. So RSP is the S&P 500 equal weight. And basically, that's just if we made all the stocks equal, you know how like, you know how Apple, Nvidia, Google, Microsoft, uh, the market caps larger, so their their weighting is larger. So basically, if all the stocks were weighted the same, where would we be right now? We would be right here. So this is RSP, and you'll see S&P 500 since that same date. We made a lot higher highs, and this is an extremely rare signal. You'll see that all of 2022, 2021, we never had any of these divergences. Even at the all-time high, we put in a higher high in RSP as we made a higher high before we had the crash. I had to go all the way back to 2007 to find another time that this happened. You'll see even before the COVID crash, we actually made a higher high or an equal high. This is the closest I've seen. We're pretty much on an equal high in RSP, but we made a higher high in SP 500, then we sold off and crashed. There's no other times here going back. This, what, this didn't happen in 2018 either. You see we put in a higher high in RSP. Never found this, never found any divergence like this until uh, you could argue this was a divergence where we made equal highs on SP500, but RSP was much lower. And you'll see what happened there. Uh, we made equal highs in SP500, much lower high in RSP. In about two months, we sold off 10%. So again, we could have a 10% sell off from about 4,300 to 3,900 in the coming weeks and months. But I said previously, there's there's no divergences going all the way back to 2007. And 2007, here it is. We made higher highs on S&P 500 right here, and we made lower highs on RSP. You can see the orange line. We made a high there, lower high. S&P 500, we made a high, higher high, and then we proceeded to fall. First, 10% uh, in two months. Then it was 20% by about three or four months, and then it was 23% more than a year about six seven months later so like i said you know divergences they can play out for a long time but uh once the top is marked very likely to see this sell off next up we're gonna take a look at the put to call ratio which is pc see your mouses this is a close daily close friday june 2nd we close below 0 0.7 if you just take a look at this entire chart here look at all the closes and look how low pc is we made a new low when was the last time on this chart we were this low? I've circled them. Last time we were this low, February 2nd. So we now got as low as we got February 2nd on the put-to-call ratio, which means there are as little people shorting right now as there, were, there was February 2nd. Another time here was Friday, January 27th. So let's take a look at these two times. What happened after February 2nd, what happened after January 27th? January 27th, the next day we sold off. So from the high of January 27th, the next day we were down about 88, 90 points. In two days, we were down 100 points. So basically, if we use the same thing, it's like implying us being down from 4,300 on Friday to 4,200 by Tuesday. That's exactly kind of what I was pointing out, what I was thinking. But we rallied even more and had a more extreme rally and swept highs one more time. That's when we got to February 2nd, which was the exact low of a put to call ratio that we had on Friday. So it's basically applying right now, there are as many people long and as little people short as February 2nd. What happened after February 2nd? You'll see from the high in one day, down 75 points. In two days, we're down 105 points. It's very similar to the January 22nd period. But the more important thing is it marked a major top and in the coming two weeks, we were down over 6%. So two weeks, 6%, taking us down to about 4,000 on SP 500. But everything is not perfect. So again, another thing that just points to very limited upside. One thing that's very cool is if you take, N if you take NDX, which is the NASDAQ, and you divide it by US 30, which is the Dow. I did point something out here. If we bring it to the weekly chart, I, I kind of did some back testing. And this is the ratio. So as soon as the ratio gets very extended, basically if the NASDAQ severely outperforms the Dow for a long period of time and it gets really extreme, after the extreme, there's a sharp reversal in the NASDAQ. So every time there's a red arrow, a red arrow, it 
that's where I marked a top on NASDAQ and then I marked, I wrote out what kind of sell off we had on the NASDAQ. So right here after the, the bottom in the ratio, we had a sharp rise. We had a 9% sell off in the NASDAQ. Then we had a sharp rise again. We had a 3% sell off in the NASDAQ. And right now we had a very sharp rise. We put in the topping candle. So I kind of, I think I wrote down, yeah, about maybe 8% sell off in the NASDAQ. So taking us from about 14,600 to about 13,500. So I've got a thousand point sell off coming in the next few weeks. Again, it's not perfect, but look at every single time we had a rapid rise in the ratio. So rapid rise in the ratio, 24% sell off in the NASDAQ. Rapid rise in the ratio, 27% sell off in the NASDAQ. Rapid rise in the ratio, 22% sell off in the NASDAQ. Here from the bottom, rapid rise, 8% sell off. Mark the top here, 12% sell off in the NASDAQ. Mark the top here, 6% sell off in the NASDAQ. Top here, 12% of the NASDAQ. So every time the ratio gets to about these 0.4s or gets even higher, we do get that kind of snapback. So boom, we got to those 0.4s again. I would expect a snapback on the NASDAQ. So I'm actually anticipating that tech is weaker than the SP500 now. Previously, SP500 was trading real sideways because the banks have been weak. Maybe the banks hold up more and tech takes a back seat. Dow rallies more and IWM rallies more, which is the small caps because small caps have been lagging severely as well. Here's a look at when you divide NASDAQ by the small caps. This is an all-time high dating all the way back to the 2000 tech bu bubble where we had the crash. So look at this is pretty cool. Um, I'm glad I'm, I'm showing this at the end of the video. So I hope everyone stayed to the end because this is a gem right here and I haven't seen anyone talk about this, but look at the ratio between the NASDAQ and the IWM, which is small caps. We are at eight and we put in a topping candle, which means Small caps will outperform the NASDAQ severely over the coming weeks and months. And you're saying, well, well how could you have such a bull claim like that? Look what we did right here. So ever since about January, NASDAQ has been going up extreme and obviously small caps haven't been performing well. Let's go back to see when did we, this ratio get so extreme in the past. You'll see we almost got there uh, at about end of 2020 before tech had a nice sell off. But look how far we have to go back. So, you know, we're just scrolling 2017. You know, the ratio was already much weaker. Three, we're down to three. This whole time, 2008, 2006. Wow, you know, very weak, very weak, crazy. Oh, look, oh, whoa, this is high. Whoa, 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 boom. End of March, 2000, we had a ratio of eight. We put in a topping candle. Do you want to see, just go pull up your chart, NASDAQ chart, and go look at what happened the week at the end of March 27th, 2000, at the end of the topping candle. I'll show you right now in a second, but right now we are at eight. We got above eight. This is the only time in history this ratio got this extreme between the NASDAQ and the Russell. So now let's go look at what happened to the NASDAQ in the year 2000. March 27th, 2000, right beside the, the top before the bubble popped. I mean, I'm not saying we're gonna have this 2000 crash. I'm not saying that, I'm just saying the ratio between the NASDAQ and the Russell got to the same extremes as 2000 and then put in a topping candle the same as this week right here. I'm not saying we sell off as aggressive because in three weeks the NASDAQ fell 35%. We've likely seen the high for NASDAQ or we are very close to it and we're about to have a nice correction. That's all I'm saying. All right, we're back to ES and the weekly charts. That is going to conclude this video. Thanks so much for watching. So again, just to, just to recap, like I said, I think that we will possibly sweep the high Monday, but then push down and, and get down to about 4,200 at some point this week. And then maybe bounce, maybe go down 4,200. We bounce up into the middle of June. And uh, middle of June into CPI, we are trading at about 4,350 to 4,400. We take out the August highs on this weekly chart here. It gets to above 4,350, maybe 4,400. Maybe CPI comes in hot or FOMC does a surprise rate increase because now we are priced in for a pause June and maybe we, maybe they do a raise. It puts a cap on this and we sell off those coming weeks into the end of June. And at some point by the end of June, we get below 4,200. I'll update you along the way of what I think, but that's basically what I'm thinking. So take it day by day, take it trade by trade. Let me know in the comments down below 
what you want to see more of. I, you know, I really appreciate all your support. Please give this video a thumbs up if you if you like this. Let me know if, this, if you found this valuable. I really do appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching and look out for the next video coming out Wednesday night or Thursday morning and I'll see you in the next video.